Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So for today, I'm going to be having another uh, answering question kind of video where I go into a scenario and attempt to answer a very frequently asked question. Now the topic I'm going to be covering today is should I get the attack upgrade or the armor upgrade? And I'm going to be taking a look at this specifically for melee units uh, and not for range units. And the reason being is because for range units, their attack upgrade, Fletching, Botkin, and Arrow Bracer, uh, from the blacksmith also gives them an extra range, which makes it just a clear choice over the armor 99% of the time. Now, for melee units, it's not as you know straightforward because on paper, uh, you get plus one attack for the attack upgrades and you get plus one armor for the early armor upgrades as well. So it's just not as clear uh, as to which one to get in a lot of situations. So I'm gonna you know do my best to answer the question and uh, I'll even show you guys some scenarios uh, to further prove uh, the point that I wanna make, you know, instead of just me telling you guys. Okay, so before we get started, I'm gonna just quickly give you guys a layout of the video. The video will have three parts. All in the same video, by the way. We're going to start by taking a look at the tech tree uh, and seeing the different costs of these blacksmith upgrades and what they do exactly. The second part is going to be me running some tests. You see here I have a lot of units spread out across the map. Uh, and I'm going to be doing multiple tests to show you guys the different upgrades in action in some classic unit compositions. And I'll explain the compositions, uh, you know, or the unit choices when I get into that second part. Uh, second part. In the third part, I'm going to be going, uh, you know, concluding uh, based on the results we get, which upgrade to get in which situation, and just a couple of quick thoughts at the end as well that I'll get to in the third part. So without further ado, let's hop into it with the first part, uh, which is going to be the tech tree stuff. So let's go for it, guys. Tech tree. Uh, again, as usual, I'm always using Saracens for all three of the players that we have, player one, two, and three in the, you know, in the game, uh, because I don't want to have any kind of military bonus uh, from the Civ. Now for the blacksmith. Uh, for this, for the testing portion of the video, I'm going to be sticking only with Castle Age upgrades, so these three and then these three. I'll talk a bit about the Imperial ones uh, because they do slightly different things um, in uh, in the end of the video, at the end of the video. But I won't do any testing there. I'll just give a quick few uh, words about them. Now, uh, so let's just go start with the attack upgrades here. We've got Forging, uh, the first attack upgrade. It costs 150 food, and it states that Infantry and Cavalry have plus one attack. All right, sounds good. The next one in line is going to be Iron Casting, and it does the same thing. Infantry and cavalry have plus one attack. It's available in the castleage and it costs 220 wood or 220 food and 120 gold. Okay, seems good to me so far. Let's go ahead and take a look at the armor. Now, the armor for the cavalry, it's called scale barding armor and it costs 150 food. It states the cavalry have plus one normal and plus one pierce armor. The same effect is going to be for the one in castleage, which costs 250 food and 150 gold. Now, infantry also does the same thing, just for infantry. So it states, infantry have plus one uh, normal and plus one pierce armor, and it costs 100 food for the one in feudal age, and for the one in castle age, it costs 200 food and 100 gold to give infantry an extra plus one normal and plus one pierce armor. Now, there's a couple of important things to note. Forging and scale, uh, scale barding armor cost the exact same. It's interesting, we'll talk about it in a little bit later. Another thing. Forging and iron casting, the attack upgrades, affect both infantry and cavalry units. Wow, this is really interesting because right off the bat, it sounds like you're getting a better deal with this since this affects a like a broader amount of units or a larger amount of units. However, I'm going to quickly stop you guys there because in a practical setting, when you're getting those upgrades in a real 1v1 game or even a team game, you're going to be having one main composition. You're not going to have an equal mix of infantry and cavalry units. Usually you're going to have like a lot of cavalry and just a few spearmen from Feudal Age. Or if you're going to go for like a pikeman push or a longswords and push, you have a lot of infantry and maybe just a couple scouts from Feudal Age. So what I'm trying to say here is that you want to prioritize upgrades that will best suit your main units. It's very rare that you'll have both the same amount of cavalry and infantry. So for that reason, I'm going to just tell you guys or uh, just explain to you guys that you shouldn't put too much emphasis on the fact that this affects both infantry and cavalry at least for the kind of competitive you know, 1v1 games at all levels, not just at top level, that we see. All right, the second thing I want to talk about is that the costs, again, are very similar. These guys cost the same. Infantry armors cost slightly different, or slightly less than the attack. However, for the cavalry armor compared to the, to the cavalry attack, uh, it's the same in Feudal Age and then just 60 resources more in Castle Age. So all that I'm saying with this is that don't worry too much about the cost. Really just try and focus about what's the best in which situation because they cost very much, you know, very similar kind of resources. So, you know, one costing more or one costing less is not going to be a big deal in like 95% of the cases. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and do some testing. So my first test will be 12 knights versus 25 crossbows. 
So I have three sets of crossbows. We're going to run this test three times. Uh, all the crossbows will be fully upgraded. They've got Barking Arrow, Fletching, both armor upgrades, and Thumb Ring and Ballistics. If you guys haven't seen my video on Thumb Ring and Ballistics, highly recommend you check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, I have got also three groups of knights. 12 knights versus 25 crossbows. We're going to run this test three times. The first time will be knights with no upgrades. The second time will be knights with plus two attack. And then the third time will be knights with uh, plus two armor. Now, when I say no upgrades, I mean just blacksmith upgrades. All the knights in this game have uh, bloodlines at 120 HP and husbandry, so they move a little bit faster. All right, I also have another test I'll be running, which is going to be knights versus pikemen. Now, the knights will have, again, no blacksmith upgrades, and they'll have just 120 HP, which is from bloodlines and husbandry. The pikemen will start out with doing the test with no upgrades. The second test will be pikemen with plus two attack. And then the third test over here will be pikemen with plus two armor, but no attack upgrades going up against standard knights once again. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it here. Uh, we'll start it off with the knights. Let me just go ahead and control the blue player. If you guys don't know how I'm switching around the players, I basically just do control plus shift plus F key of the color. So if it's blue, it's control plus shift plus F1. If it's red, it's control plus shift plus F2 to control them. Okay, I just thought I'd get that out of the way for those who are curious. Let's run our first 12 knights with, again, double checking. No upgrades whatsoever except blood lines of husbandry. I'm going to just patrol them into this army of fully upgraded red crossbows. Now, I chose 12 knights versus 25 crossbows because this is about the numbers you'll have in a real game at the same time if one guy's going for archers or crossbows and the other one is going for knights. And it looks like, right off the bat, well, we're getting shredded. This is no surprise because the crossbows are much more upgraded, but let's take a look at just how bad it was. Uh, okay, it looks like there's 18 survivors here, and, well, we can say that three are, uh, or two are critically injured and one is more or less injured, halfway in HP. We'll leave these guys here for later use. Uh, so you don't have to memorize this information whatsoever. We killed seven units. Now, let's go ahead and test the same test again, but with attack upgrades. But first, let's go ahead and see the pikemen versus the knights. Uh, again, with no upgrades on the pikemen. Right? I have to do this test uh, first, because the, the pikemen have no upgrades. And after I get the attack upgrade, it'll affect both pikemen and uh, cavalry. Alright, so I'm running these pikemen into the cavalry. Both are unaggressive. And let's see exactly what happens. Now, I'm not actually sure who will, actually, who will come out on top in this fight. But regardless who wins, we can just take a look at the stats of the units remaining. Wow, so it looks like this is a stomp for the pikemen, and they end up surviving the fight with six pikemen alive. So uh, six pikemen alive, three are very uh, heavily wounded, and one is, on, or a couple are damaged. Okay, so we'll keep these guys later here for later reference. Now, let's go ahead and pick, uh, pick up both attack upgrades, the so forging and iron casting, and this will affect pikemen with plus two attack and knights with plus two attack. Let's run the same pikemen test first again before going over to the knight one. So let's run the pikemen into the knights and let's just see what happens. The knights didn't change, though the only difference in, you know, the only variable change here was the plus two attack on the pikemen. And let's just see what happens. So obviously we expect to have a better result because we only got a, a positive, you know, boost. And uh, well, something really weird happens actually. We got a very similar result, in fact, eerily similar, with a couple of them on critical HP. In fact, one, two, and three, very low. And, well, even in this case, a fourth one very low in exchange to having uh, two damaged ones in the other scenario. So why is this the case? We got two upgrades, which costed a fair amount of resources. We should expect to win this fight with, you know, by quite a lot more than what, what happened. Well, the explanation here is that the attack upgrades don't affect pikemen versus cavalry that much. So let me attempt to explain exactly what's going on here. Now, the pikeman has four base damage, and the knight has two armor. So, with no upgrades whatsoever, the pikeman is doing two damage to the knights. However, the pikeman also has a hidden attack uh, bonus. I'm not exactly sure how much this is, but let's just assume it's 10 damage, okay? Because it's somewhere in the ballpark around there. So, we're doing two damage base plus 10 for a total of 12 damage. Now, if we add the plus two attack from the blacksmith, now our pikeman has four plus two. If we subtract the two armor from the knights, that would be four base damage. If we factor in now the attack bonus once again, we'll have 14 damage when we have the blacksmith upgrades. Meaning that investing all that food into the blacksmith upgrades only gets us a difference of two damage from 12 to 14 damage per shot with the pikemen. So as you can see, it's not that big a bonus. And oftentimes in you know most pikemen versus knight battles, it's not going to make that much of a difference. And we're coming out with very similar results. And it, the, the only variance here is how the units actually patrol and fight from fight to fight. 
Okay, so from this conclusion, we can say that, you know, uh, armor up, attack upgrades for pikemen, not that important when you're going up against knights, which is a very likely scenario in a lot of cases. So let's go ahead and finish this off with the uh, knights versus the crossbows. Again, the only difference here is that we have plus two attack on the knights, and I'm going to go ahead and patrol them in the same fashion. We're on attack ground, uh, sorry, we're on uh, aggressive, and the archers are on attack ground. Or stand ground, what am I saying? Stand ground. And I'm just going to patrol them in, and I'm going to make sure they're all fighting at once. If you're not fighting, I'll just click them to another unit. And let's just see what happens. And again, it looks like, well, we're not taking the best trade here. A lot of knights are getting slaughtered, and the crossbows look like they're standing strong at the end of it all. So let's go ahead and switch over to the red portion and see exactly what happened. Well, there's actually 13 crossbows here. So we can conclude that, well, from 18 crossbows, some injured, to 13 crossbows, again, some injured. It seemed like, it, you know, getting the plus two attack on the knights actually made some pretty big difference. We got five units killed compared to before where we got five, or, you know, they survived with five extra units. However, it's still not great. We invested so much resources getting that plus two attack that we could have invested into like four or five extra knights, maybe even six knights. I'm not sure what the math there off the top of my head, but it just doesn't seem like a cost-effective trade versus the crossbows. So what's going on here? The crossbows just always beat knights? Uh, we're not quite sure. Let's go ahead and just go uh, and... and Try to test that one more time. Uh, this time we'll get the uh, the armor upgrades on the knights. So here I have knights from from player two that are that have no upgrades, and we're just gonna go ahead and get both armor upgrades. There they are. So now it's no attack upgrades with plus two armor. And I'm gonna run them into these crossbows, which are fully upgraded. So same test for another time. Let's see what happens this time. We have the armor and not the attack. All right, come on. And my test actually accomplish something. Can I answer this ever burning question? Well, the knights are going in. Let's see what happens. Well, they're not really fighting too much. This is actually a thanks to E moment. But uh, again, these things happen. The thanks to E moments happen. We're just going to try and get the objective results here. And not worry too much about the variance with the uh, unit pathing and stuff like that. Oh, this is looking a lot better. Already we're lasting. Anyone has a time watch going on? Top watch, rather? We're lasting a lot longer. Are we, are we actually winning this fight? No way. Who would have thought we're actually going to win this fight? With four knights alive? I don't have plus two attack. I'm doing less damage. Well, here's the thing. With more armor, we're actually able to survive more shots and dish out this 10 damage way more often than we were able to dish out the 12 damage in the first scenario. So let me just explain, to, and explain this one more time if it's not already clear. We have 12 knights. If we give them plus two attack each, that means that every second or every like few seconds in battle, we're going to be doing plus two damage times 12. So that's going to be plus 24 damage. However, in this case, with the armor, we're not going to have the damage boost. But, since we're uh, having plus 2 ranged armor or plus 2 pierce armor, there's 25 crossbows, each shooting at 7 damage. Now, with minus 4 armor, that's going to be 3 damage each shot with the arrow. So, 25 times 2 is 50. We're going to be saving 50 damage, which is what we'd have, uh, if, if we didn't have the armor, we'd be taking extra 50 damage per second or per shot fired uh, of the crossbows uh, in the fight. So basically, we're going from dealing an extra 24 damage to saving an extra 50 damage. On top of that, crossbows simply fire much faster than knights. So they'll get in like two shots before the knights get in one hit. And so we're saving a lot more HP by getting the armor on our melee units than we are dealing damage by getting the, da the damage upgrade on our melee units versus range units. So in conclusion here, I can state without a doubt that when you're going up against range units, in 99% of cases, you're going to want to have the armor upgrade on your melee units. In this example, the knights. So that's pretty set in stone. If you guys still have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. But I think this test really spoke for itself. With 13 remaining after uh, plus 2 attack. And 18 remaining after or with no upgrades. And then with us winning the fight with 4 knights remaining. Uh, with the armor upgrade and no attack upgrade. Okay, let's go ahead and finish off with the last test of the day. So I'm going to have the pikeman here. And we're going to go ahead and pick up plus two armors and again no attack i keep stressing it the only variable here is the one in question which is uh, infantry armor in this case versus the knights which have the same upgrades as the other knights in the game all right come on pikeman do me proud you got the armor upgrade on you now let's see exactly what's going on here all right pretty reasonable spread here not a lot of thanks to e going on and uh well we're about to see exactly what's going to happen and, well, it looks like... Oh, poor guy, he's defeated. Alright, well, it looks like we're actually surviving 
with more units than we had before, and even more units than we had in the plus two attack era, uh, with only six surviving pikemen. We have seven surviving pikemen here, and like five of them are half HP, so we're saving a lot more HP. And this is only the only difference is we have plus two armor compared to having plus two attack. So what's exactly going on in this case? Well, again from before, remember how I said that getting the attack upgrade on the pikemen only increases your damage output by two? Well, in this case, if our pikemen have enough armor to survive an extra hit, I'm able to actually attack again with the pikemen, which will give me the 10 attack bonus again. So yes, I'm only dealing two base damage instead of the four base damage with the attack, but I'm able to get the plus 10 bonus damage. Again, I'm just using that as a proxy more often in a fight which means that i'm just my damage output is simply higher because i'm having more of these pikemen survive more of these pikemen able to do the 10 damage on repeat uh and it's just a lot more damage output in general now i want to just quickly state that if we were doing like pikemen on pikemen and we had like an equal number of 10 and 10 it doesn't matter if you get the, the plus one attack or the plus one uh defense because it's just melee units uh, if you deal one more damage and the other guy's taking one less damage, it ends up canceling out anyways. So that doesn't do anything. Uh, but in certain cases like this, where you have pikemen with attack bonus versus the knights, it actually matters which one you can get. And I can conclude without a doubt from these tests that getting armor on pikemen or on any unit that has an attack bonus versus another unit, getting armor is much more effective than getting attack. Contrary to what people might think, because attack bonuses from the blacksmith don't actually multiply the hidden uh attack bonuses that the pikemen get uh versus uh the, the knight in fact it just adds to it so adding is not as nearly as good as multiplying it and therefore it's much better to be able to survive an extra hit and get off that attack bonus one more time because it's much more significant than just a plus two attack from a blacksmith all right so that's gonna be the end of the test i've got just a couple more things i want to talk about now the one case where you'd want the forging more than armor is usually when you're raiding exposed villagers now you'll obviously want armor if you're going to be running through tcs to tank their t sorry to tank their arrow fire however when you're raiding villagers if you take a look at the knight stats here it has 10 base attack and if you get plus one armor or plus one attack it'll have 10 plus one if you take a look at a villager here it's got one melee armor so meaning if you have 10 base damage on the knights you actually kill the villager in five hits Whereas if you have a plus one attack with a forging upgrade, you're going to kill it in four hits. Now, saving a hit on a villager when you're raiding can actually make or break a raid. Because if you run in with two knights, all you need is them to hit once and then for them to hit another time. And that's it. Four, hit, four hits and the villager is dead. If you need a fifth hit, well, then you're going to have to stick around there longer and you might not actually get it. So when raiding exposed villagers, forging does help. Um, other than that, I think that it's a pretty good rule to always prioritize armor upgrades on your melee units and i can say that uh, with quite a lot of uh, confidence based on some of these tests so before i end the video though i did say i'm going to talk about the imperial age upgrades and so if you just go back into tech tree one more time i'm sorry guys uh, we can see that blast furnace actually gives infantry and cavalry plus two attack whereas plate barding armor only gives uh cavalry plus one normal normal armor and plate mill armor only gives infantry plus one normal armor so only in Imperial Age, if it's melee units against melee units, let's say like uh, 30 Paladin versus, or 30 Knights versus 30 Knights about to be Cavalier, you want to get the Blast Furnace in that, uh, on, in, only in that instance over Plate Barding Armor because you're obviously benefiting from plus two attack here and only plus one melee armor here, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I know I'm packing a lot of information into this video. Feel free, please, in the comments, just ask me what's up. Uh, I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can. I hope this was clear, and I hope you guys enjoy these kind of videos. That's going to be for me, though. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, wait, one last thing. It's uh, day 18 from our third days of YouTube, and it's been going great. We broke our goal of 20k subscribers, and, uh, well, now we're on to 25k, which is the new goal for the month. A bit ambitious, but let's try our best. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.